Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you in my second video on Down Spear and Short Sword. This time is in response to some questions that were asked about what to do when you are charged. Now, with Florentine, with Great Sword, things like that, I'm not sure that this is going to be so much of an issue since these forms are fairly susceptible to stabs from your Short Spear. The form that I think is going to give you a lot of trouble is sword and board. And if you keep kind of experiencing this situation where someone closes in on you and they get up in your grill and they absolutely take you to town, then congratulations. You've understood one of the basic concepts of why this form can kind of choke at close ranges. And basically what I'm trying to say is this is a ranged weapon you're not going to do very well in close range, just like a sword and board is going to do very well in close range. They have more options than you are. So if you've put together this trend by now, congrats, you're using your noodle, uh, one of the most dangerous weapons out on the field. But just like a shield, uh, it only takes a couple of good solid hits from a red to completely disable. All joking aside, there are a couple of things that you can do to defend yourself against these situations. Primarily, it's to avoid close range in the first place. As you've probably noticed by now, um, this isn't your only weapon. I mean, this is a harassing weapon. With sword and board, you're basically trying to stab at those legs to immobilize them. Uh, one, so you can flank and kill all their buddies. And two, because when they're on their knees, it's just a matter of time before either this or a combination of this and this finishes them off. Or, you know, you go back, you grab a couple of buddies, and you tag team the dude. Or do that. I'm not trying to, um, you know, ostracize anyone here. Long story short, you want to avoid close range altogether, and there are a couple of things that you can do that with. Primarily, what you're going to try and do is remember our opening shots? You want to feign high to the shoulder and attack that sword side hip. So that's going to be this little spot right here. Now, as they're closing in, you can do a couple of things. You can stab that board, you can mess with them, but as they close in to mid-range, you need to transition just a bit. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to kind of reverse that feint-stab combo. What you're going to do is you're going to try and stab with your spear as hard as you can at this lower corner. This is their sword side lower shield corner. So what this is going to do is a couple of things. One, it may stagger your opponent, but more importantly, you're going to use this as a fulcrum to open up that shield. Notice how it's turning. Now, as it turns, look at what becomes available. It's that shield side shoulder. Easy to strike. Now, you can do this on a round, and later I'm going to show you how to do it with a tower shield. But as they close in, you need to transition yet again. Now, at this point, they should be at mid-range, and you've probably already messed up a couple of different things, and you've gotten yourself into the situation, or alternatively, the enemy player is just that good. They're doing their job well. So at mid-range, you're going to want to choke up, and you're going to want to use this defensively. So this spear is going to do something really important for you. It's going to offer a lot of passive defense. That means you can stick it right here, and it's going to do its job a lot of passive defense from chops from their sword. You know, Basically, they're going to try and slash, and all it's going to do is just get chewed up. Now, something to look out for, you are going to be extremely susceptible to jabs, to thrusts, to stabs. And this is because at the end of the day, you're basically Florentine with a much longer range. Now, at this mid-range, their first shot, again, like I said, is going to tend to be and try to A-frame up here. That's a term I may have thrown around, maybe not. But A-frame is basically, look, you're making an A, so this is exaggerated. But basically, you want to just kind of A-frame up. And this protects you from a lot of chops and a lot of scoops and a lot of wraps that, I mean, just by being in the way, you're going to block. But one of their first instincts is look at where their sword is in relation to your spear. An attack is going to come from this direction at what looks easily available this spear arm. It's going to look like it's out there. It's going to look delicious. They're going to want to take this away because this thing has been putting them on their knees all day. And there's nothing that a boardman hates more than being on their knees, as far as I know. 
Long story short, they're going to throw a shot at this spear. And what you're going to want to do is now that you're choked up at mid-range, you're going to want to move outwards, so basically move your guard out just a bit. And as they throw a shot here, take that arm. Try and get a friend to practice with you in slow motion. And after a while, you're going to build up a muscle memory. So you see that shot coming in, block chop. It's almost second nature. Block chop. You can follow forwards to a sword side shoulder or a sword side hip. You know, the world's your oyster at this point. But basically what I'm trying to say is watch for that shot because this is going to be what you're going to see about 80% of the time. They're going to throw at this arm. Remember, move your guard out just a bit. Don't over exaggerate, but move it out just a bit. Take that first shot, basically parry with this great big old stick and chop that arm. Now that we've covered what to do at medium range, I do want to let you know that another way you can stay out of these medium to close range engagements is as they close in, you want to use your footwork to work towards their board side uh, of their body. Basically, you're sidestepping to your right. Um, that is assuming they're a right-handed boardman, but basically you're stepping to their shield side. They have to fight over their shield, they have to reposition, they have to use footwork, and this gives you enough time to basically increase the range. Um, that's one of the strengths about this, is it's a lot easier to move with this than with a board. Now we were talking about with the round shield, how you can stab and it opens them all up. But with these great big old tower shields, it's a little bit harder, especially if it is a uh, you know, strapped tower shield. So you're gonna have to take a different approach. As they close in at this medium range, you should be choking up. But as they close in, you can do the same thing. You can stab at that lower hip side corner, that lower sword side corner. And it's going to do the same thing. The only difference is with a bigger tower shield, and this is a back shield, not a tower shield, so just use your imagination, but you can kick that lower right hand corner, that lower sword side corner. So you're trying to achieve the same thing. You're trying to open their board up as a fulcrum and take the shield side shoulder or the shield side hip while using this to parry and defend yourself. Now, as you throw that kick and you throw the shot, you can move to their board side, keep moving away. You're going to want to look for a lot of mobility here. Agility training is extremely important, and you can look up some exercises. I'm sure football players, baseball players, basketball players, they got a million and one agility exercises for you. They're all great. Um, at the end of the day, you need to be as fit as you can for this sport. To begin with, it's going to put you, you know, at a severe advantage. Um, whew, another thing that I'd like to cover is when you are in that close range, <clears throat> It's okay to get mean with them. It's okay to push them around, because at the end of the day, you're trying to create distance. You're trying to get them up out your grill. You're trying to kick their board and open up some openings um, as best as you can. Now, there's one last option that you have, and I think this was actually mentioned in the thread on uh, Serious Foam Fighters on Facebook, but you can choke up yet again, and you can stab. Now, the only real option you're gonna have is, basically, it's gonna be at the uh, sword side pocket. So basically, <clears throat> looking at a shield, the sword is right here. You're going to choke up and you're going to want to stab that shoulder. Now it's kind of a thin target and it's more or less close to the head. So you're going to have to go home and you're going to have to mark a spot on the wall and you're going to have to practice stabbing. Slowly at first, just do it right. But after a while, you can do it on the move and you can keep stabbing that same spot as you move. So as they close in, you can choke up. So I've covered a few things today, just to summarize. In the first place, you want to avoid those situations altogether with proper footwork, primarily by moving around to their board side. Um, you know, at the end of the day, your toolbox is at long to medium range. Their toolbox is at medium to close range. Now, once they do go into mid range, remember, choke up, parry, most common shot, will be thrown to your spear, take the arm. Uh, another thing that we, we covered was opening up using fulcrum. So stabbing at their sword side hip to the shield to open up the board. And basically that's going to open up their board and then throw the shot to the, to the shield side shoulder or the shield side hip. Finally, uh, when they do get in close, especially with tower shields, because they're going to have to be in close to use them effectively and throw you know, their full repertoire of shots. 
you can kick that same pocket, the hip, the sword side hip, to open up the shield side shoulder. And we've covered that a couple of times. So if you have any questions or if you feel like there's anything I didn't exactly cover, uh, feel free to leave a comment or simply send me a message on Facebook. Thanks, guys, and uh, hope you have fun out there.